I think that's a great uh, shift uh, because uh, using your home as a clinic can uh, have a lot of benefits. First, it saves you uh, the commute time. It's also uh, allow you sometimes to receive the result of the consultation much faster. Welcome to Longevity by Design, a podcast designed to give individuals access to the leading scientific information in the field of longevity. The ability to add years to your life and life to your years needs no opinion. Join us as we ask science to take the wheel. In each episode, Dr. Gil Blander joins a co-host and an industry expert in the field of longevity, shining a light and getting the answers to the key question, how can we live a longer, healthier life? Hello, I'm Ashley Reaver. Welcome to Longevity by Design, How to Live a Longer, Better Life. We're produced by Inside Tracker, your science-based guide to optimizing your body from the inside out. Today's episode is an Ask Me Anything with Gil, utilizing customer questions, and I hope you get a lot of value from it. Hello, I'm Ashley Reaver. Welcome to Longevity by Design, How to Live a Longer, Better Life. We're produced by Inside Tracker, your science-based guide to optimizing your body from the inside out. Today's episode is an Ask Me Anything with Gil, utilizing customer questions, and I hope you get a lot of value from it. So Gil, Inside Tracker just moved to a new subscription model. It's the first time that we've done that. What was the reason behind moving to offering subscription now? Yeah, changing your behavior and improving your health and health span is a, a task that takes time. It's not something that you do once in a while or something that you do only once. And in order uh, to be uh, effective with that, it's something that we'll need to continue and do it again and again all over your life. And we believe that uh, having a subscription, something that you subscribe for a year and the next year and the next year, is a solution that uh, will allow you to be more engaged with that. And also, it's our responsibility then to make you engage and be sure that you are doing it. Because if you won't do it, you won't continue the subscription. So we decided to move to subscription to allow our users and to force us to focus more about and the continuous optimization of your body for the long haul. Okay. Another big change that happened on the product recently is a big update to our blood work page. It looks beautiful if you haven't gone and looked at your results on desktop in a while. But a shift in how we organize them into health span categories as opposed to either individual biomarkers or those biomarker groups. I'm just going to read off our health span categories now, our cognition, endurance, fitness, gut health, heart health, hormone balance, inflammation, metabolism, recovery, and sleep. So what was the impetus behind shifting how we organized those biomarkers into these new health span categories? It's very hard for a, a person that doesn't have a PhD in longevity to understand what are the most important markers and what should he or her uh, pay attention to when they are trying to optimize their uh, body and the health span. So we thought, let's say, uh, provide to our users uh, 10 different categories and show them in each category uh, what is their score from 0 to 100 and then focus on the categories that the score is lower and provide to them a very defined recommendation to do that. So in a way, it's a way to simplify it and show you what you should focus on, what are the recommendations, and also what build this category, what biomarker are involved in that. We hope that way will allow our users to understand and use the platform in a better way and receive a better result on their effort to optimize their body. And Dr. Furman just talked to us about what complicated systems our bodies have. It's not just one marker that will improve yeah. this whole system. Yeah, yeah. And a good example when we discussed that, he, he said that there are more than 4,400 different genes that related to inflammation. So just inflammation is 4,400 genes, and it's uh, more than the 25% of our genes are only related to inflammation, but a lot of those genes are also related to other uh, systems. So it's very complex. And again, our job is to try to simplify it for you as a user and also allow uh, and explain to you what to focus on and what are the interventions that they will uh, provide to you the higher value for your investment. And in those, you'll see some biomarkers show up in multiple of those health span categories too, so just like you were saying. Exactly. It's uh, Nothing is uh, a lot of those genes or protein or... Uh, 
molecules are involved in a multi or different uh, scores. And that's why biology is so complex. So something that maybe our users don't know so much about is that we have a really robust data science program department, so to speak, within the company. And we're revealing more and more of what data science is, is showing and allowing us to learn. So what is Inside Tracker's data science analysis? What has it allowed us to reveal related to user results? Yeah, as you said, uh, uh, we are getting a lot of data from our users, and it's a real-life data. Basically, it's not something that happened in the lab. We are following you during like, your lifespan and collecting data at a specific time point that allow us to see what's happening with real people in the real world in real time. And we are very lucky and fortunate to have more than 100,000 uh, users with a lot of data, and that allows us to combine them together and look as a population-wide what happened and what are uh, what InstaTracker is doing for them, but also what are the effects of different intervention on their, on their life. Um, so one uh, very interesting uh, result that we have seen is that uh, the impact of, of sleep on your blood biomarker and physiological markers, we have seen that people that sleep between seven to nine hours have a much better cardiometabolic uh, markers and a better uh, VO2 max than people that sleep less than that or sleep, people that sleep more than that. Again, showing that uh, sleep is very important and you should uh, pay a lot of attention uh, on your sleep and try to optimize your sleep number and sleep uh, quality. Another uh, interesting point, in, it's because we are collecting not only blood data, but also DNA and data from fitness tracker, we see the effect of a uh, genetic on, uh, on that. So, for example, we can see that uh, people that have a high risk for a specific, high risk to have a, a marker in a bad situation or bad level, we see that might influence the effect of the intervention on that. For example, people that have a high risk for high uh, cholesterol, it's harder for them to optimize cholesterol with a natural and simple intervention than someone that have low risk for having a high cholesterol. Another interesting point about genetics is that we looked at a lot of those uh, markers and realized that genetics only explain around uh, 10 to 20 percent of uh, uh, the whole uh, story of a specific marker. So if we're going back to LDL cholesterol or total cholesterol, if you have a very high risk for high uh, cholesterol, you still have a 80 percent that control by your environment, lifestyle and uh, activity and only max of 20% that is controlled by your genetics. So don't blame your genetics, and you might need to work harder, but you still can do it using a lifestyle intervention. Another uh, a very interesting result and very exciting result that we found is that uh, uh, our users uh, can uh, improve their blood biomarkers from baseline to follow-up, and we have a, a paper that we published in uh, 2018, and actually, Ashley, you are a co-author on on this paper, that we show that uh, from baseline to follow up, people that follow Insta Tracker platform uh, on average improve their uh, blood biomarkers from baseline to follow up in a uh, statistically significant but also medically significant. Again, it's not a causation, so we cannot say that Insta Tracker caused that, but it's a, a very strong correlation that showed that following Insta Tracker allow you to optimize your blood biomarkers that hopefully will allow you to live better longer. Now, fast forward to now. We have now more than 100,000 users that are using the platform, and we ran the same analysis, but now with much more uh, people, and also we have them for a longer time. So we could see that uh, it's not only that they improve their blood biomarker from baseline to follow-up, but also that they can uh, continue to improve it from the first follow-up to the second follow-up and to the next follow-up, and even after five or six blood tests, their blood biomarkers either continue to improve or stay better than before. So that shows that uh, using InstaTracker or platform like InstaTracker that support you in your optimization uh, journey can help you not only to improve the blood biomarker, but also continue to maintain them in a good way or even improve them, meaning that there is a long-term effect. And as we discuss, it's a we are here for the long term for longevity. Having uh, this data is very exciting. Um, for me, for the Insta Tracker team, and I think that uh, for everyone that try to live better longer, actually we have a, 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 a future, and uh, that's something that can be happening. Um, 
We also look at the, looked at the effect of such tracker on biological age that's called inner age. And we have seen that uh, our users, uh, on average users that started with the uh, inner age higher than the chronological age, improved the level from baseline to follow up very significantly. Actually, 60% of them or so have done it. And on average, they improve it by almost two years. So basically, also when you look at the aggregate of all those blood biomarkers which reflect in inner age, we can see that they can improve it from baseline to follow up. So that's a high level of what we have seen from uh, our data uh, uh, science team. We have much more data to mine and a much more uh, outcome, but those are a few nuggets that I can discuss today. Okay, we reference a paper often that discusses how only about 7% of U.S. adults are quote-unquote metabolically healthy. So I'd love to hear your perspective on maybe why, what metabolic health means, and just a little more info on this research. Yeah, so it's an interesting research that uses NHANES. NHANES is a basically aggregation of a... a collection of data from uh, the U.S. population. Every year they are collecting around 10,000 people that uh, reflect the U.S. population. Uh, so it's uh, demographic, demographically representative of the U.S. population. And uh, in this paper, they uh, basically try to look at uh, a population of around 55,000 uh, American pretty recently in 2017-2018. And they define metabolic uh, uh, issue based on a, a level of uh, deposity, level of blood glucose, blood lipids, and clinically a cardiovascular event on top of other uh, markers. And what they found, which was very concerning, at least for me, and I think for everyone, that only 6.8% of the U.S. population are uh, metabolically uh, optimal in the metabolic direction. Uh, they also show that there are a difference between subpopulations. For example, Caucasian, more or, or white people are more metabolic, healthy than, let's say, a, a Hispanic a, a origin a population. So it's go up to 10% and the Hispanic is around 5%. They also show that younger people are more metabolic, healthy than uh, old people, which makes sense. They also show that there is influence of a socioeconomic uh, condition. Uh, basically, you are richer, you have a better metabolic, and again, you have more time to exercise and to eat better and to buy those foods. And they also show that education is a factor. So basically, someone that is more educated have a better chance to be uh, uh, metabolically healthy than uh, someone that is not. And I think that uh, it's an interesting observation, and I think that uh, most of us knew that uh, our society is pretty sick. And the food that we are uh, consuming is include a lot of processed uh, food. We are not exercising enough. Uh, we have a lot of toxin in our water and in our air. There are a lot of uh, issues that we are facing today in the modern society. And I think that it's a good wake-up call to everyone to try to improve their health and, and basically uh, be better and hopefully live better longer. As a Longevity by Design podcast listener, you understand the value of improving your health for today and for all the years ahead. And if you want to live your healthiest, longest life possible, you need to understand what's going on inside. At Inside Tracker, we take a personalized approach to health span optimization that eliminates guesswork from your wellness plan. Inside Tracker analyzes blood biomarker and DNA data, along with physiomarker data from fitness trackers like Aura Ring, to deliver personalized food, supplement, lifestyle, and exercise recommendations that allow you to take control and improve your health span. And for a limited time, Longevity by Design listeners can get 20% off at the Inside Tracker store. So if you're ready to receive a personal health analysis and data-driven wellness plan to optimize your body for the long haul, then it's time to start inside. Visit insidetracker.com slash podcast to get started today. That's insidetracker.com slash podcast to get started today. So there was a recent paper released about superagers and preservation of white matter in the brain and that those superagers were able to maintain cognitive ability better. And I'm hoping you can explain to us what superagers are, and then also just a quick summary of what this study shows for cognitive ability. Yes, yeah, so superagers are elderly that actually have a brain performance very similar to a population that is around 30 years younger than them, which is amazing. Uh, I would love to have... <laughs> my brain power uh, as it used to be when I was 30 years younger. 
And what uh, uh, the paper showed that uh, actually the, the white matter in their brain was also similar to population that uh, younger than them, which actually suggests that, it might suggest that the white matter is what important for the brain performance. And I assume that we need more investigation to, to understand exactly why it is, but I think that it's starting, we are starting to understand the mechanism for that. In recent years, we've seen a big rise in at-home testing services and people utilizing at-home testing. What, what's your opinion on a lot of yeah. these services? Yes, yeah, so I think that was a, a big shift during the COVID-19 uh, time when people realized that when you need to take care of it yourself, you don't always need to go to the clinic. You can have a telemedicine call with your clinician. You can, a lot of the tests you can do at home. For example, a lot of us have done and still doing a COVID-19 test at home and receive the result 10 minutes later. So we suddenly realized that home can be, in a way, a clinic. It's not as good as the clinic, but it can, can be a clinic. So I think that's a great shift uh, because using your home as a clinic can have a lot of benefits. First, it saves you the commute time. It's also uh, allow you sometimes to receive the result of the consultation much faster. It's also decreased the risk of receiving some nasty infection or other a negative effect or negative uh, bacteria from uh, being in the, in the clinic itself. Still, we need to understand that there are some things that you cannot form at home. For example, you cannot do a colonoscopy at home. You cannot do add a, a, a test or a sit with your clinician and a measure a, some measurement you cannot do at home. So that's a, a, the baseline for that. Also, we have seen a, a lot of a uptake of a, at home testing, and we see that a, around 25% of our users that would like to receive blood tests, they are actually doing it at home. We are sending them phlebotomists to their home or office. They are drawing their blood and then receive the result at their own leisure. So I think that's definitely something that uh, gaining uh, some more and more uh, interest and excitement. We also, our uh, DNA testing is done at home. So we are trying to allow our users to do as much as they can at home. Obviously, they don't need to come to our uh, office uh, in Cambridge to have consultation. So the Insta Tracker platform allows you to do it at uh, your home or office or even on your, the train whenever you want to. I think that there is a lot of uh, excitement about that. It's uh, going forward. And I would expect that in the future, we'll have more and more diagnostic and treatment that are uh, happening uh, at home. And now it's important to make sure that the tests are validated tests. So yeah. we, what you could get from a phlebotomist drawing your blood at home is much different than if you could prick your finger at home. Correct. So a lot of the atom testing for blood, for example, that you prick your finger and uh, a put a, a, a few drops of blood on a, a paper, they are not accurate. So you might receive a value, but that's not the right value. While when you have a phlebotomist coming to your home and taking your blood and sending it to a lab that uh, is in the level of the lab that your clinician is using, you can trust those results much more, absolutely. And what do you think about people flip-flopping between certain at-home tests versus at Quest facilities? Should they compare those numbers? apples to apples, so to speak? Uh, so I think that it should be very similar, and we see that. But if you want to be 100% sure, it's better to stay with the same uh, layer because people that are tested at the clinic, their uh, shipment of the uh, specimen is much faster, and uh, there might be some effect, but uh, this effect shouldn't be too significant. Prevention is the best strategy to help people live better for longer. And by prevention of chronic diseases in particular, it's much more efficient to prevent a disease than to try and treat it. Yeah. And that's one of the main goals of Inside Tracker. So can you give a few maybe key actionable insights into how individuals could prevent disease? Yeah, of course. And I, I might start with an example. The example is cardiovascular diseases and clogging of your arteries. Today, uh, in the current medicine, you are only uh, receive a treatment when the level of the blood biomarkers is getting to a level that already show that you have an issue. While the right uh, treatment is uh, even when you start to see a trend that uh, your markers are going up, for example, up or B, at that time you should start to intervene. You can do some lifestyle intervention. You can do some uh, nutrition and exercise. 
But if that doesn't work, you might need to have some uh, medical intervention. And then what will happen is that the clogging of your artery will be minimal, and that will allow you to live, if you can, to 120. But when you won't do that and you just treat the symptom while when the ApoB is uh, pretty high, then you have a better chance to have already a clogging of your arteries. And you might get to a situation that you have a cardiovascular event or other events because you haven't prevented it early. So that's a good example why you should do the prevention very early and not a way to see the alarm happening and only then treat it. Now, a few examples of that, and actually I have eight. So the first one is uh, keep your uh, weight in a healthy range. Ashley, you mentioned before a runner paper that we published last year, and the data there is very strong. A very strong correlation between BMI and the risk of having high level of blood biomarkers, the strongest correlation. Meaning that uh, if you have a lower BMI, you have a better chance to have the marker in the right range and uh, live a better longer. So that's the first one. The second one is building muscle and strength. And why is it important? Because it's known that uh, the majority of us will uh, die because of uh, a fall that b uh, will break our hip. And then the statistics uh, show that uh, then we'll have around seven months to live after that, which is horrible. Uh, but there is a lot to prevent. If you build muscle and you maintain your balance and be uh, much more balanced, first you're uh, less likely to fall. And if you fall, most likely the, your muscle will absorb the fall and then you won't break the hip and then you won't have seven months uh, to live. Maintaining a, a muscle and balance is uh, definitely a, a, a very important uh, intervention. Uh, the next one is uh, uh, increasing your VO2 max. VO2 max is basically a marker of your aerobic capacity. And there is a, a strong correlation between a, a better aerobic capacity and longevity. Also, the VO2 max tend to creep down with age. And the people with a better aerobic capacity can not only live longer, but also have a, a better a quality of life. Because when you have a, a, a stronger VO2 max, you might be able to go to your ride or run or climb on a mountain, even at the age of 80. While your VO2 max is low, you can barely walk in your house and go to the restaurant. So definitely, VO2 max is a very important marker that you should strive in order to improve your uh, lifespan, but most importantly, your health span. Uh, another one is uh, uh, something that is uh, very trivial for instant care user is a uh, monitor and try to optimize your uh, blood biomarker. So the blood biomarkers that we are testing at instant tracker are very relevant for uh, health and longevity. And if you will optimize them, you have a better chance to keep the doctor away, as we are saying, and hopefully live uh, longer. And we discussed before that we showed by via our data science team that you can do that. So now just do it and uh, hopefully you live better longer. Um, another important part is know your genetic potential and also uh, know your genetic risk. And I can give you an example for myself. I tested my genetics and I realized that my grip strength is pretty low or my potential to have a strong grip strength is low. And I also realized that I have a high risk for high visceral fat, which is, we discussed it in a, a few episodes before, that is a very bad predictor of disease. So now when I know that, I can work on my grip strength. So I can go to the gym and uh, lift some weight. And I also can work on my visceral fat by uh, exercising, nutrition, and other intervention. But that's me. Everyone else has a different one. Some people have a higher risk for a low a bone mineral density. Another person might have a high risk for a, a issue with cognition. So when you know your genetic risk, you know how to fight it before the event happening and hopefully won't have the uh, or delay the effect of your genetics and live better longer. Another uh, interesting uh, development for the last few years is something called liquid biopsy. And there are a few companies that are offering this solution. And what happening there is that they collect some uh, blood, and from this blood they can find a trace, a, a signal from early stage cancers that can happen in around 50 different organs. 
Basically, you can find a trace of evidence that you might have a cancer. Then if they find it, you can go to your clinician and he can look further because he know which organ it's coming from and then hopefully detect it earlier and increase the, the chance that uh, you will survive from the, your cancer. So I think that's a, a very good prevention tool that is coming uh, out. There are uh, already a few solutions available in the market and I envision that in the future, most of us will do it as a routine testing. And the last one, the eighth one, is using of DEXA scan. I assume that some of you heard about DEXA scan, some of, them, of you haven't, but DEXA scan is a, a, a very good tool for you to understand what's happening inside your body. It's allowing you to know first what is your body fat percentage, then what is the location of the fat in your body. For example, do you have high visceral fat or not? So in my example, I have a high risk for high visceral fat. I tested and I found that I have a high visceral fat. So now I know that it's not only my genetic, but also I have it, and now I can fight it based on my genetic and based on the DEXA scan. You also know your muscle percentage and the localization of the muscle, and your uh, bone mineral density. And all of that is uh, like a real important information that allow to guide you to what should you do and what intervention you should do in order, again, to live better longer. So those are eight different activities that you can do in order to allow you to live better longer, and all of them are, avail are available today. So if you want to, you can do them today. Thanks for listening to Longevity by Design. Please subscribe to this podcast on Apple, Spotify, or YouTube. Longevity by Design is powered by Inside Tracker, a personalized health optimization platform that helps people improve their lives by improving their bodies from the inside out using personalized, science-backed recommendations for nutrition, supplements, and lifestyle changes. To learn more, visit InsideTracker.com slash podcast.